Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. I am continuing my streak of finishing projects I have started many many months ago and this time it is the Steampunk keyboard. It is going to be part of the post-human PC build which I will continue on very soon as well. I got started with this project right after uh, I built uh, this uh, 10 kilos uh, keyboard and I um, well, first just did a 3D printed uh, prototype to make sure that the electronics are working but this was supposed to be uh, the one where I actually make everything uh, all nice with metal key plate and everything CNC machined but then I had a lot of issues uh, cutting uh, this stuff on my old mill and long story short I did manage to cut this key plate but then put the project aside uh, in favor of doing others so I now continued with it. I did do uh, quite a big overhaul of the design. Originally I was gonna have just a wooden uh, frame uh, that this sits in and that's why there are also uh, already holes uh, drilled but uh, for one those holes ended up not quite being properly aligned and two uh, the way I had this wooden frame designed uh, could never actually make it uh, would be way too uh, brittle and way too thin so I would have to uh, use a different material but it's not really what I was going for anymore uh, anyhow. So I decided to instead uh, redo the entire model and I came up with this uh, 3D printed uh, shell instead uh, which gives me a lot more creative freedom and I try to incorporate uh, some of the same elements that I did in the post-human uh, like the RAM heat spreaders uh, to kind of make this uh, somewhat of a cohesive unit. I did still uh, use the CNC and by now my Radrick CNC is also uh, going strong so I uh, milled this uh, wrist vest uh, out of just some uh, pine wood uh, and uh, it has a nice uh, contoured uh, top surface so I used a ball end mill for that and uh, it turned out really nice. It did take quite a bit longer than uh, expected. Uh, turns out uh, that uh, riding 15,000 millimeters a minute is not the same as 1,500. Now I did use a fairly small, only a 4mm uh, ball mill. Uh, if I were to do it again, I would use a 6mm ball uh, definitely, uh, which would allow me to do a, a bigger step over, so I don't have to do quite as many passes. I also uh, cut out uh, this uh, acrylic back plate and uh, this worked out great. I used the 4mm uh, single flute uh, end mill and uh, just got beautiful chips uh, from that uh, with very very clean edges uh, without even a finishing pass. But let's talk a little bit more about the keyboard PCB here. Uh, this is of course the same PCB that I used uh, in the 10 kilos uh, keyboard uh, video. It is uh, all uh, custom designed, manufactured by PCB Way, and at this point I also want to give a big thanks uh, for them sponsoring in this video once again. And they make super high quality PCBs like this one, but uh, also many different uh, ones as well. If you Building a slightly smaller project, you can actually get 10 PCBs uh, up to 10 by 10 centimeters, uh, double-sided, with silk screen, everything for just five dollars, which is great for prototyping and means that the barrier to entry uh, to get your own PCBs made is really low, and anyone uh, can make use of it. If you want to spend a bit more, they can also offer a nice big matte black ones like this one with uh, gold plating and uh, everything, but of course that uh, is going to be slightly more expensive. What I have on here uh, is I have a 80 mega 32 U4 uh, processor, which is the same one that is used in a lot of the Arduinos, like the uh, Arduino Micro, the Pro Micro. And the great thing about it is that it has a USB controller already built in. This means uh, that I just have to basically hook up the USB port just through some simple resistors directly to the processor and it can uh, communicate uh, with the computer after I've uh, flashed the bootloader on there. The firmware that I'm running is a QMK uh, as I've uh, mentioned in the other video and if you want to know more about the details of how I configured it you can check out uh, my older video of it. Other than that I'm using a Gateron Red switches for uh, all the black keys and Gateron black switches for uh, the metal keys. 
Um, the reason behind this is, for one, I had them left over and they didn't have enough of either one of them, but it actually turns out really good since the metal keys are quite a bit heavier than the plastic keys. Uh, having a key switch with a higher activation force, which the black uh, ones have, uh, compared to the red ones, uh, it means that the force required to press a metal key down versus a plastic key is now almost the same. I also do have a backlighting, uh, of course, uh, the LEDs are populated. They are uh, the nice uh, back mounting ones, uh, so there's a hole inside of the PCB and the LED is actually mounted from the back, which allows me to still have access to them now, uh, although uh, I cannot access the front side of the PCB anymore. This is great if I have to replace one and it's also uh, just a lot easier to integrate. This then uh, sits on top of here and there's a nice uh, cutout at the back for the USB-C port uh, that is connect, uh, used to uh, connect uh, to the computer. And then I uh, made this little, little uh, top covers as well uh, to cover up the screw holes since I am no longer using them and uh, they would just kind of um, look ugly. So I made uh, this top cover that goes on here and just kind of encapsulates everything nicely. And the wrist wears is gonna mount somewhere here. But of course, I'm not gonna just leave this white and black. And this is also not gonna stay uh, this color. So there will, it's gonna be another montage in just a second. But before that, I wanna give once again a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I wanna give a big thanks to you guys for watching it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you liked it, please leave a like and also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future projects. And with that, enjoy the montage.